Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. After anthem protests, the NFL just got hit with the ugly truth today. The NFL made huge headlines all weekend as whole teams began kneeling during the national anthem, which many viewers and sports fans, including President Trump, found disrespectful. Well, it looks like the president was onto something, as NFL ticket sales have plunged 17% since the protests, according to the Washington Examiner. According to TickPick's Jack Slingland, there's usually a slight decline in ticket sales after the third week of games, but this year's sales have taken a particularly steep decline. We have seen a massive decrease in NFL ticket purchases this past week in comparison to years past. Week 3 seems to usually have less ticket orders than Week 2, but this year ticket purchases are down more than 7% from this time last year. He continued. While we can't specify if this decrease is due to the president's comments, player and owner protests, play on the field, or simply the continued division of consumers' media attention, the conversation around the NFL this week has focused on the president's comments as well as the player's and owner's reaction. As viewers continue to abandon their NFL Sunday habits, both the number of ticket sales and the purchase price of tickets will drop. 7% is certainly a substantial decrease in ticket sales over last year. It is hard to figure out how much attributed to the national anthem protests, but it's safe to say that President Trump was probably right in that quite a few people were turned off from buying more tickets. Do you think the NFL should start losing ticket sales after the national anthem protests? Share it out. H.T. Washington Examiner Juan Williams calls Trump a racist for attacking Elizabeth Warren, until a real Native American shuts him down. President Trump has been known for insulting everyone who gets in his way or insults him first. If that person ever happens to be a minority, the media jumps for joy. Because then they can try to paint Trump as a racist. When really, in Ivanka Trump's words, Donald is an equal opportunity offender. Fox's Juan Williams declared that Trump is a racist for calling Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas in front of Navajo Native Americans. Trump, finds it just very valuable politically to attack people of color in this country, and he does so and then says, I'm not racist. Said Williams. Gutfeld immediately challenged this claim. Like Paul Ryan, what color is Paul Ryan? What color is Hillary Clinton? What color is Marco Rubio? Asked Gutfeld. What I am saying is he finds political advantage and value in making whipping boys out of people of color, and in this case, I think he went after her in a way that even now Indians, Navajo Indians, said was insensitive and they considered it as lure, said Williams. However, at least a few Navajo Indians disagree with Williams. According to Thomas Begay, a Navajo code talker, he did not find the term offensive. The Marines made us yell Geronimo when we jumped out of planes and that didn't offend me either, said Begay. ESPN Stephen A. Smith says that black athletes have it pretty rough because of their money, video. While soldiers are defending, risking their lives, and dying for our country the mainstream media is choosing to call Colin Kaepernick a hero. All Kaepernick did was kneel during our national anthem. When he was done with that he went home to his multi-million dollar mansion. However, according to ESPN Stephen A. Smith, wealthy black athletes have it pretty rough. And they don't have it rough in spite of their money. They have it rough because of their money. If we're being honest, the black athlete has it pretty rough, not just in spite of the money, but actually because of it. With money comes expectations to do right, to be right, regardless of the scrutiny or adversity one faces, explained Smith. 
which is why Kevin Durand was absolutely correct and righteous when alluding to his privileged relationship with the viewing public while making sure to lament the fact that it wouldn't exist for him or anyone black were it not for riches and fame, said Smith. This was in response to a recent interview with Kevin Durand. I didn't have it as rough when it comes to that, as far as social or systematic oppression or any social issues. They didn't really apply to me because I could put a ball in a basket. Just me saying that kind of woke me up a little bit, like damn, that's all I'm good for? Like, if I wasn't a basketball player, what kind of men would they look at me as, you know what I'm saying? Said Durand. Obama launches Asian speaking tour to correct President Trump. President Trump recently visited with China, South Korea, Japan and more. Now that President Trump is home, Obama has decided to launch a speaking tour in Asia. Many are angered that this is Obama's pathetic attempt to correct President Trump. Barack Obama is the great explainer to the rest of the world of what the heck is going on in America. He's a calming influence in a world that's teetering on frenzy right now. Obama arrives and it reminds them of old-style diplomacy and the dignity of statesmanship, explained presidential historian Douglas Brinkley. Obama just arrived in Shanghai. He is planning on meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping, who President Trump had met with just a few weeks ago. Obama's office claimed that they are planning to discuss the global economy, climate change and more. When it's done right, the former president will check in before he goes, and see if there's anything he should or shouldn't do or say. It's a long-standing tradition, claimed Michael Duffy, author of The President's Club, inside the world's most exclusive fraternity. Do you think that Obama needs to back off? He is not the president and he never will be again. Do you think Obama should face repercussions for what he is doing? Keith Olbermann's career just ended for a reason as insane as his politics. Obnoxious liberal reporter Keith Olbermann just announced that he is quitting political commentary forever. This could be a cause of celebration for some conservatives. So why is he quitting? Because according to him Trump is finished and he will be impeached soon. I am confident now, even more so than I have been throughout the last year that this nightmare presidency of Donald John Trump will end prematurely and end soon, and I am thus also confident that this is the correct moment to end this series of commentaries," said Olbermann. It has been pain, revulsion and horror. I'd like to go back and enjoy some of my life again, and I'm going to. No illness, no scandal, no firing just, I've said what I had to say. It was as obvious as I made it seem. I give my work everything I can, so it's not like I can dial it back," said Olbermann. I am retiring from political commentary in all media venues. We will have a chance to alter a phrase I heard somewhere, to make American America again. Thank you for all the kind words and all the support. Have fun storming the castle. My work here is done. Matter of fact, so is Trump's. Resist. Remove. Peace," said Olbermann. President Trump is not going to be impeached any time soon. But whatever helps Olbermann sleep at night. Are you glad he is gone? Jake Tapper has biggest hissy fit of all time over Trump's tweet CNN brings the truth to the world. CNN's Jake Tapper just had the biggest hissy fit ever in response to Trump's recent tweets. We should have a contest as to which of the networks, plus CNN and not including Fox, is the most dishonest, corrupt and or distorted in its political coverage of your favorite president, me. They are all bad. Winner to receive the fake news trophy. Tweeted President Trump. At Fox News is much more important in the United States than CNN. But outside of the U.S., CNN International is still a major source of fake news, and they represent our nation to the world very poorly. The outside world does not see the truth from them," tweeted Trump. That is false. 
the amazing journalists at CNN International bring the truth to the world. They're carrying out important, rare and often dangerous work. They have been for decades, cried Jake Tapper. Now, that I'm I am sharing these facts with you, facts the president does not care for might explain why he seeks to discredit CNN and all media organizations who report on him without fear or favor, the Washington Post, the New York Times. The president does not care for us reporting these facts and seems that he does not want you to believe these facts, said Tapper. The president said he wanted to give an award based on which network is the most, quote, dishonest, corrupt, and or distorted, but his problems with journalism seem to be rooted in the exact opposite. He hates that which is honest and ethical and precise. Ask yourself, why might that be, said Tapper. Wow, Trump really struck a nerve.